Hi, this is Karen at Snickerdoodle Designs, and today we're going to take a look at how to add a pen to paper in Photoshop. When creating scrapbook pages, we very often need to fasten papers, photos, or embellishments together, and using a stick pen like this, or a safety pen, or other similar embellishments, it's sometimes hard to get a realistic shadow. It can be really tricky at times. As with all things Photoshop, there are multiple ways to accomplish the same task, and today I'm going to show you just one way, my favorite way to do this. I am using Photoshop Creative Cloud 2015 today, but the techniques mentioned in this tutorial will work in Photoshop Elements as well. So let's go ahead and get started. This is uh, from a kit, Ladybug, Ladybug, and uh, the paper and the embellishment are both from the kit. So what we'd first like to do is click on the um, pin to make it active, and then we want to add a layer mask to that pin. We do that by clicking on this third icon to the uh, right, and it says Add Layer Mask. Now we need to go up and select the rectangular marquee tool and draw out a rectangle on the part of the pin that you would like to have underneath the paper. So I think that looks good. Make sure your foreground color is black. Click on the mask, which is the white part that you see attached here to the pin. Hold down Alt and hit the backspace key and that will mask out that part of the pin. Control D will deselect and get rid of the marching ants. If you feel uncomfortable with masks, you can marquee, select, and delete. I just like to work in non-destructive ways in case I change my mind. When you erase, you have lost the pixels for the pen, but when you mask them out, you can bring them back if you want. But the choice is yours, either way works. Now let's go ahead and add some pen holes here. We need to first select our background color and we do that with a color picker. Some people like uh, black pen holes, some like gray, and some like a darker shade of the paper that they're using. So I'm going to click on the foreground color to bring up, double click on the foreground color to bring up the color picker and I'm going to choose um, just a dark spot here Oops, I am on the wrong layer, so that didn't work. Let's get on the paper and bring that up again. Click on a dark spot here. And if um, most of the time we're probably on the hue, but if we click on the luminance, then you see that there are all colors in this color range. And so all I have to do is slide the slider down to stay within the color range, but to get a darker color, a more saturated color. And I think that looks pretty good. I don't want it to be black, so I will click OK. Now I need stain on the paper to click down here the left to the left of the trash can, add a new layer. Let's uh, name this left and let's name this right. I just like to keep the uh, pen holes on separate layers in case I want to uh, do something differently with them. It just gives you a, um, more flexibility. Go ahead and come over and click on the um, ellipse tool. I'll bring this up here and on the right I will go ahead and just draw out an ellipse that I think looks good for a pin hole. Click on the Move tool to release that, and I think that looks fine. And I will do the same on the left. If you like, you could just copy this and move it over. But I'm going to go ahead and do it this way today. All right, so there's our pin holes. And by doing them um, differently on different layers, you see they're not exactly the same, and I think that adds a little bit to the realism as well. So now we're ready to make our shadow on our uh, paper. We could, let me back up, we're going to use the dodge and the burn tools to do that, and these are right here where the hand, the dodge will lighten, the burn will darken. We could do that right on the paper here, but that would be working destructively. And what I mean by that is that the darkening and lightening will occur on the paper itself. And if we change our mind or make a mistake, 
we have to undo control Z undo and control Z undo until we get back to the state where we were happy. But there is a non-destructive way to use the dodge and burn tools and that is by doing this. Make sure that you are on your paper again and click two more blank layers. Name one dodge and name one burn and it doesn't matter what order they're in. Go up to edit, fill, 50% gray, click on the next layer, edit, fill, 50% gray. Now change the blend modes of those layers to overlay. And now when we work, we're going to be working, we're going to dodge on this layer, we're going to burn on this layer, and we will not be touching the background paper at all. So let's go ahead and burn first. Grab our burn tool. And uh, let's see, let's go up to the top here and check our settings. We want this to be mid-range. If you were working on a really dark paper, you might want shadows, a really light paper, highlights, but mid-tones usually works pretty well. We would like a soft edge brush about two-thirds the size of the ellipse that we drew. So let's go ahead and see what I have selected here. We also want the hardness of the brush to be set at zero and that's fine. And um, we can make this just a little bit bigger. You can do that by using your right bracket key, just clicking once or twice. And um, I think that's fine. So make sure, again, we're on the burn layer. We have the burn tool selected. And our exposure, I usually like to go anywhere between 10 and 15 percent. We can always go back over this if we want to make it darker. And this tool works better in smaller increments rather than a really heavy application. So make sure that the bottom of your circle is at the bottom of your ellipse and just drag over to the right. And you can see it's very, very light. Let's do it again. And if we back out, now you can see that it is a little more visible than we're up when we're up super close. I'm just going to go ahead and do that a couple more times. And I think that looks fine for now. Let's go ahead and go to the dodge layer. And we will do the same thing up at the top. And this is going to give us a highlight on that layer. Don't worry about making that a super straight line. It's going to look a little better if it's not totally straight. And uh, this is personal preference. I think that looks fine. I know sometimes in videos it's harder to see, so I'm going to go over it just one more time to make it a little more prominent than I might otherwise. And I'll put in a little burn, a little more burn on here. So I think that looks good. Okay, now what we need to do is go ahead and add a drop shadow to this pen itself. And I am going to use a drop shadow from my new drop shadow set. They are all named. Um, so I'm going to use the one for stitches. Whoops, and I am on the wrong layer. We don't want to do that. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. We want to, don't want that right there. We want this on the pin. So we're on the pin. We're going to go ahead and add that shadow. And I would like it a little bit darker. So if I click on that, it will open up the layer styles panel and all I need to do is move this opacity over a little bit and I think that looks good. That looks fine. Now if you're happy with that, you can go ahead and leave it that way, but if you'd like to get a little more creative, you can play around with your um, pen holes as well. So let me go ahead and give you a couple examples of that. This is the one on the right, and if I hit Control T, that will bring up the Transform tool. If I right click within the selection, I would choose Warp, and I might just warp these a little bit just to make them not quite so perfect. And sometimes you have to just kind of play with it a little bit. That looks fine. Looks, it looks a little more realistic. Not, it's not so perfectly round. And if you like, you can also experiment with blend modes to see 
if there's a blend mode that you like better than the one that you have. I'm going to go ahead and change that back to normal. You could experiment with that on your own. Also, some people like to add a little embellishment, or I'm sorry, a little embossing to this. And I have a little embossing style that I created. Actually, my imprint styles work real well with this, but this is one that I just um, adjusted a little bit to work with this pen. And this is a bevel and emboss. I have it set to outer bevel, smooth, depth 20, size 4 and then I put a little outer glow on it for seven. So keep your eye right here. This is without and this is with. Very subtle. I'd like to uh, mention one other thing. And again, this is all personal preference. Um, you can leave it as it is or play around with it as you like. When you are using a pen on a 12 by 12 page, you're not really going to see a whole lot of detail in these uh, pen holes. So don't get caught up in fussing with them too much. I say that only because I get caught up in fussing with them too much and a lot of times it's really not necessary because you really can't see them very much. The only other thing I would like to mention is this particular shadow works well with this pen, but say you had a different type of pen and you wanted a bigger shadow or a deeper shadow on this. Let me go ahead and put on a different shadow, um, maybe this one here, and I'll adjust that to bring that in a little bit so it's maybe a little bit harder. And this isn't a great shadow for this particular element, but I want to show you um, a problem you might run into based on the particular element you're using. If you want a deeper shadow like this, do you see how it doesn't match the holes and it looks really unrealistic? In Photoshop it's a really easy fix and then I'll show you how to fix it in Elements. In Photoshop, right click on the Style layer and choose Create Layer and that puts a drop shadow on its own layer. If I turn the pen off, you see the drop shadow. So all we need to do is make sure we're on the drop shadow layer, hit Control T to bring up the transform tool, right click, choose warp, and then just move that shadow back into where it should be according to the pen holes. And that looks pretty good. So right here you can see that looks realistic. It's right by the pinhole and then it does taper out a little bit and the same with this one. Now in Photoshop Elements what you would need to do is a little different. So let me control Z that and get back to the drop shadow. Bring it back. Bring it in just a little bit. Actually, I'm still thinking Photoshop. I'm sorry. Let me get rid of that drop shadow. Uh, clear layer style. Okay, so in, in Photoshop Elements, what you'll need to do is select the pen by holding down the control key and clicking on the pen icon. Create a layer either above or below the pen and then fill that with I'm going to choose black. Now because I put it on the top, all I need to do is move it down below. And then you move your arrow keys, use your move key, move tool, I'm sorry, the V key to access the move tool and just nudge it into the position that you like. Obviously we're going to want to lower that opacity quite a bit. And now this is your shadow layer, control T, warp, and then just go ahead and warp it just like we did the other one in Photoshop. So that's all there is to it. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.